This is a short review of anticonvulsants or medicines used to treat epilepsy, to treat people that have seizures. Kind of categorize the anticonvulsants here into a few categories. Up top in the red are the sodium channel blockers. Next is a calcium channel blocker. After that in green is a GABA antagonist. Next are two drugs that have many mechanisms of actions, some of which are listed above. And lastly, the last three in a purpley pink color have unknown or not well understood mechanisms of actions. Let's talk about the first one on the list, carbamazepine. Mechanism of action for carbamazepine is that it is a sodium channel blocker. It specifically binds inactive sodium channels to extend their inactivation, which prevents the random firing in the brain that causes seizures. Based on the modern approach of treating epilepsy, this drug, carbamazepine, should be used for simple partial, complex partial, and secondary generalized seizures. It's considered narrow spectrum. Other indications for carbamazepine are trigeminal neuralgia, bipolar disorder. So it can be used to treat epilepsy, trigeminal neuralgia, and bipolar disorder. Now for the side effects, I've listed the main and notable side effects first. Main side effect for carbamazepine is hyponatremia, which kind of makes sense because it blocks the sodium receptor. Some of the other side effects, which are included in many of the other drugs on this list, are bone marrow suppression, hepatotoxicity, sedation, dizziness, nausea vomiting, double vision, ataxia, fetal malformations, bone demineralization, and Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which is a nasty rash. Carbamazepine interacts with P450 enzymes, and it actually induces P450 enzymes, which can reduce the efficacy of other drugs that use this, that use this metabolism system. And because it interacts with the P450 system, its, its metabolism is, is obviously hepatic. Next on the list is another sodium channel blocker, phenytoin. Um, this has complex actions, but it essentially blocks sodium channels. Also used for the same kinds of seizures, simple partial, complex partial, and secondary generalized. No other indications for phenytoin. The main side effects here are bone demineralization, gingival hyperplasia, which follows long-term use of phenytoin, hypotension, arrhythmias, and tissue necrosis, which follows IV administration of phenytoin. We see the same list of side effects here, bone marrow suppression, pedotoxicity, sedation, dizziness, nausea, vomiting. That same list kind of applies to many of the anticonvulsants. Phenytoin also induces the P450 enzymes and its metabolism is hepatic. Lamotrigine is the last of the sodium channel blockers. It's specifically selective for excitatory neuron, neuro, or neurons with excitatory neurotransmitters such as glutamate. So neurons that use glutamate might be blocked by lamotrigine. It's used to treat all seizures. It's considered a broad spectrum anticonvulsant. Other indications are bipolar disorder and antidepressant effects. Main side effect for lamotrigine is Steven Johnson syndrome, which is that which is that nasty rash, it can be life-threatening, and it has the same list of side effects as the others. This drug interacts with P450 enzymes. It doesn't necessarily induce P450 enzymes. It doesn't make them work more efficiently. However, Oral contraceptive pills can decrease the efficiency of lamotrigine. So both of those interactions are worth knowing. And there is hepatic metabolism for lamotrigine. Next is ethosuximide, which is a calcium channel blocker, specifically the alpha subunit of T-type calcium channels in the thalamic neurons. This is specifically used for absence seizures. So it's also considered narrow spectrum because it's only used for that one kind of generalized seizure, the absence seizure. There are no other indications but it is first line for absence seizures, ethosuximide, that, so that's worth emphasizing. No notable side effects here, just the same as the rest. Uh, no notable interactions either, and uh, it is hepatic metabolism. Phenobarbital is next. This is a GABA antagonist. It augments the GABA receptor, uh, which has an anticonvulsant effect because GABA is a is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It specifically augments the calcium, or excuse me, the chloride channel uh, that, that, that is a GABA receptor. This is also narrow spectrum, so it's used to treat simple partial, complex partial, and secondary generalized seizures. It's also used for tremors, similar to a drug called primidone, which is used for essential tremor. Main side effects of phenobarbital are hyperactivity, addiction, and sedation. Those kind of make sense because it is a barbiturate. 
phenobarbital causes hyperactivity, addiction, and sedation. Same list of other notable side effects there. This is another P450 inducer, and it's also uh, metabolized hepatically. Next is valproate, which has many mechanisms of actions, including blocking sodium channels, enhancing GABA, and blocking calcium channels. It's used for all seizure types, considered broad spectrum, also used as migraine prophylaxis, and also used for bipolar disorder. Main side effect here are that it causes fetal malformation. It's a strong teratogen. It can also cause weight gain, tremors, hair loss, fulminant hepatic failure, which limits its use in kids, and bone marrow suppression, and the rest of the side effects as usual. It's a P450 inhibitor, which has the opposite effect of phenobarbital, phenytoin, and carbamazepine, and it's also hepatically metabolized. Next is topiramate which also has many mechanisms of actions. This time it blocks sodium, it enhances GABA, and it blocks a glutamate receptor, specifically the NMDA receptor. Also broad spectrum anticonvulsant, it treats all seizure types. It's also used for migraine prophylaxis. So there are some similarities between valproate and topiramate. Main side effects of topiramate are cognitive impairment, weight loss, and kidney stones, and uh, the rest of the side effects as usual. Topiramate specifically interacts with oral contraceptives, this time to pyramate decreases the efficacy of oral contraceptives, as opposed to the kind of the flipped effect of oral contraceptives decreasing the efficacy of lamotrigine. This has both hepatic and renal metabolism in about a 70 to 30 ratio. Next on the list is gabapentin, has an unknown or partially known mechanism. It's used to treat narrow, a narrow spectrum of seizure types of epilepsy. It's also used to treat neuropathic pain and chronic pain. Main side effects here are ankle edema and weight gain, along with the rest of the usual, and it interacts with antacids. It's renal metabolism here. This one is full renal metabolism. Pregabalin is similar to gabapentin, has an unknown or not well understood mechanism, narrow spectrum, used to treat neuropathic pain, this time neuro or this time fibromyalgia. Side effects are similar. The notable ones are ankle edema and weight gain, along with the rest. Uh, big interaction with antacids, which limit the availability of pregabalin, and it's also renally metabolized. So gabapentin and pregabalin are pretty similar. Gabapentin is used to treat chronic pain. Pregabalin is used to treat fibromyalgia, but they both cause ankle edema, weight gain, can't be used with antacids, are renally metabolized, are narrow spectrum anticonvulsants, and have mechanisms that aren't really well understood. Last on the list is levetiracetam, which also has <clears throat> an unknown mechanism. It's used to treat all seizure types. It has no other indications. Main side effects here are depression and behavioral and psychiatric issues, which can be found in up to 10 to 15% of people who use this drug. No main interactions here, and its metabolism is renal. This has been a review of anticonvulsant medications. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for listening.